Good morning and welcome to worship here with us at St. Paul's this second Sunday after Pentecost. Greetings in the name of our risen Lord. May God's spirit fall upon all of us today. May we be gathered as people of grace, of love, and of hope. We're glad to be together. I share a few announcements before we continue our worship service today. First of all, thank you for everyone who is here, even wearing a face mask for just a little bit longer. And also for all of you who are online with us. We know that we are connected through God's Spirit in a variety of ways today. So thank you for your participation in worship of our triune God. We have a, uh, a way that you can and extend this reach of our ministries by sharing your Facebook feed for those of you that are watching and worshiping in person and also on your phone and those at home, we invite you to share. We also invite those of you who are just connecting with us for one of the first times to connect through a Connect card, which you'll find online, and we can answer questions and find out how we can be in prayer with you or for you. Our neighborhood meal enrichment program begins this week. It's been a ministry of St. Paul's and other church partners for many years. Thank you to Kate Broker for her serving on the board. And for those of you that would like to get involved throughout the summer, please reach out to Kate and she'll tell you more about that. We have another invitation for any of you who would be available for a little scraping and priming uh, in order to prepare for the property of Charles and Laura Lee Edwards. This is one of the projects that we are in a partnership with Matthew 25 Ministries for Transform Week, which comes up in a couple weeks. But this week, we need a little extra help to get that ready for all of the work that will happen during Transform Week. So um, if you are available any time this week for a little extra help, Gary Lindsay is in our choir. He's waving his hand, and he would love to hear from you, and he will let you know what kinds of help would be blessings. We want to invite you, those of you especially that are here in person, to stop at our Connection Center, which is right outside this space. The United Methodist Women have information about the upcoming mini thrift marts and also about a June 17th Mission Day. We want to support and continue to find connections through the work and the mission of our United Methodist Women. In worship, we want to invite you to continue to share any thoughts or ideas that you have, any request for certain scriptures or books of the Bible or a theme in worship or any requests that you may have as we continue to make our plans for the rest of summer and fall and even into 2022. Uh, Kevin Lodge is the chair of our worship committee and he would invite any of those ideas being shared with him as we work together on that. And two weeks from today, not only is it Father's Day, but it is also a, a new time to worship outside under a tent or two. We're going to be in a, in a series called Tent Stories, and we invite you to, to come. You, you can bring your own lawn chair. That would be fantastic. If you don't have a lawn chair, we are also renting some chairs to, to have available for you, too. So don't let the chair be a hindrance in your participation. We look forward to three Sundays outside with a nine o'clock service, 11.15, and our African National Service at one o'clock. Um, please, please come. It should be a special, casual, comfortable way of getting together a long-awaited fellowship. 
And the last thing I would share is that we do have communion as part of our worship service today. So those of you who are here in person will be served by our communion servers and invited to receive this gift of grace from God. For those of you that are online and you would like to stop by the church to receive your elements, we will also find a way to be outside between 10 and 10.30 if any of you would like to, to stop by that are, that are online. I think that's probably all for, for right now. Let's, let's prepare our hearts and our minds for worship this morning on this Sunday when we will invite a special guest to share a message of love. the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. Enter his courts with prayers. Give thanks to him and praise his name. His love and grace forever. His faithfulness continues to enter us. Here in this place, no light is streaming. Now is the darkness vanished away. See in this space our fears and our dreamings brought it to you in the light of this day. Gather us in the lost and forsaken, gather us in the blind and the lame. Call to us now and we shall awaken, we shall arise at the sound of our name.
I'd like to welcome Cindy McKee. Reverend Cindy is Thank a you. member here at St. Paul. She's also an ordained deacon through the Minnesota Annual Conference. And Cindy has been invited by all of us to share a message and lead in worship today as this is our Iowa Annual Conference weekend and we weren't sure we were going to be here. And so we are blessed beyond measure with Cindy today and her leadership. And I'm blessed by them being here today. Yeah. So yeah. you may be seated. Thank you. Thank you, Sherry. I think we know as people of faith that prayer is one of the greatest gifts that we have in our spiritual life. So we call us now to a time of prayer. Lana's going to lead us and she's going to sing through our call to worship, call to prayer chorus. Lord, listen to your children praying. She will sing it once and then we will all sing it through together as we come to our time of prayer. Today is written by Ann Weems. It's from a book, Soul Weavings. Oh God, we pray this day for all who have a song they cannot sing, for all who have a burden they cannot bear, for all who live in chains they cannot break. For all who wander homeless and cannot return. For all those who are sick and for those who tend them. For those who wait for loved ones and wait in vain. For those who live in hunger and for those who will not share their bread. For those who are misunderstood and for those who misunderstand for those who are captives and for those who are captors, for those whose words of love are locked within their hearts, and for those who yearn to hear those words. Have mercy upon these, O God. Have mercy upon us all. Pastor Sherry is gonna lead us in the prayers of the church this morning, but before that, let's just take a moment of silence. Think about those words, maybe. Think about who's on your heart today. Who needs your prayers today? A moment of silence. And so now let us continue to pray on a path of love together. Lord, listen to your children play, praying in hope and love. Through flowers given by Rich and Mary Jane Overman in remembrance of loved ones. For the fellowship and connection of our Iowa United Methodist Annual Conference as we continue our meetings today, our challenges, across the conference and world for our denomination and others. In our important work with you, Lord, with all people, 
to witness to your path of love in hurting and anxious, fearful places. For safety and nourishment of the soul through service of our young adult mission team who we blessed and sent on their way yesterday, may your love be made known through them and within the team as they worship in Indianapolis this morning and then on their way to Eastern Kentucky where work awaits. And for our welcome here in this place of a United Methodist Volunteer and Mission adult team arriving from the Eastern United States here tonight. For our mission partners across this city of Cedar Rapids, as summer brings a season of change, that we all might find ourselves sent out on a path of love and your grace. For your healing and grace, for recovery, treatment, and care, for all that we name in the quiet places of our hearts, for Mina Arbor, Dean Beer, Nancy Nigren, Wendy Morton, Gary Leterre, and the cancer care among us. Hear our prayers. Hear our prayers in loving memory of David Strang, Marty Grayson, and for Bob Coker and his wife, Joan, Bob, who died in February of 2020, but whom services will be this Saturday, June 12th, at the Sinclair Auditorium on Coe College campus as we gather there with Bob's family and other friends. Lord, listen to your children praying. Amen. And so we sing. Send us love. 
Good morning, everyone. Wow, it's good to see people. Just take a moment and take that in, and you as well. For centuries, people have turned to the Holy Scriptures for hope, for peace, for encouragement, for teaching, all kinds of reasons. And so it is the same for us today. To turn to our scriptures, we're thinking about love today in the context of a Christian life. I've invited Jackie Cool and Tom McKee to help me bring forth some of the readings to you today. So um, they're short readings. We're going to have the slide come up. For the first one, we will read it, and then we will have just a moment of reflection on that and uh, move on to our other slide. So let's have the first um, scripture reading. Do everything in love. Let the morning bring me word of your unfailing love, for I have put my trust in you. Show me the way I should go, for to you I entrust my life. And over all these virtues put on love, which binds them all together in perfect unity. Let love and faithfulness never leave you. Bind them around your neck and write them on the tablet of your heart. Be completely humble and gentle. Be patient, bearing with one another in love. We love because he first loved us. And now these three remain, faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these is love. If I have the gift of prophecy and can fathom all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have a faith, can move a mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. My command is this, love each other as I have loved you. Amen. Thank you. Would you pray with me? Gracious God, author of life and creator that makes all love possible, come now and move among us in this place where we worship you and pray for our life in you. God, fill us with the power of your Holy Spirit so that we might be more open to what you would have us think about this day, in this time, in this place. May we feel your love in us, around us, and connecting us together in the bonds of faith. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I think we all know that love can be a motivating force in our lives. A pastor tells a story from when he was in college one night when he, was, he got home from a date with his girlfriend, who was now his wife, he was telling his roommate that he thought he was in love. 
And the roommate said, well, how do you know? And the pastor said, well, we were out driving around with the windows down in the car, just listening to music, and we came upon this romantic little spot near an old church on the outskirts of town. And my girlfriend said, if you'll put the top down on the car, I'll give you a little kiss. And he told his roommate that he had the top down on that car in five minutes. And the roommate said, five minutes? Well, I can put the top down on my car in 30 seconds. Yeah, said the pastor, you have a convertible. <laughs> now, this kind of romantic love is an important part of relationships for people, but it's not the kind of love that we're talking about here today. When I was in fourth or fifth grade here at St. Paul's, I remember a Sunday school teacher telling us that one way to think about God's love was to think of it wrapped all around us like a blanket. Well, that made sense to me. It felt good to be all snuggled up in this love. It felt safe and secure. And as I grew in my spiritual walk, I came to understand that this love around me wasn't all there was. To have God's love around me was a good start. But God wanted much more for me and from me. God wanted the love that surrounded me to get inside of me and for me to let that love go crazy and make a positive difference for the world. And as I grew in my spiritual walk, I learned that love is not a characteristic of God. Love is God. God is love. Love in this way is a noun. It is what God is, not what God does. And then love becomes a verb when we realize that God who is love lives inside of us and that love becomes real for the world through who we are and what we do. Why is this love so important to us? As Christians, we seek to learn about, understand, embrace the teachings of Jesus, and then we seek to live a life that demonstrates these teachings. We want all people to know about the freedom and the grace that Jesus offers. Love provides the context in which we live our spiritual lives. It's the soil where our Christian faith is planted and grows. Love is the basis for our lives. Indeed, can we say the very reason for our lives? What God wants for your life and for my life is to imitate Christ, to live for Christ alive in the world. Now, this is a tall order that is before us all of our lives because the hard work comes because to live like this means we have to change what we want. We have to change our desires. We have to change what we want for our lives from a self-focus to a Jesus life focus. It's a lifetime work. Do you remember this song? We used to sing it when I was growing up here at St. Paul's on retreats and other places, that one that says, love is in love until you give it away, give it away, give it away. Oh, we always hit that, oh, hi. Oh, love is not love until you give it away, and it comes back even more. When you give love away to another person, it's a win-win situation. The other person, the receiver is blessed, and you, the giver, is blessed. And God is known. This past year and a half has presented us all with many challenges. Issues of the pandemic have affected all parts of life. We've been affected socially, economically, physically, emotionally. And then what about the most important part of our life? Our spirituality. 
I've really begun to start thinking more and more about this for myself, and I encourage you to do the same. I don't have it all figured out yet, but I'm working on it. How has the isolation and the constant adjustments and the uncertainty affected me spiritually? How has it affected you? How have I been doing on giving away the love that lives in me because God is at work in my life? I'm processing this, but one thing I know is this. To be most fully Christian, we need a connection to other Christians in the body of Christ. And we need to ask ourselves, how does the church live up to this need? To care for each other in the name of Christ is a great privilege and call on our life. To see each other as God sees us. Have you ever done that? Have you ever looked at another person and really tried to see them as God sees them? It's very humbling. If we saw each other as God sees us, what would happen then? To see each person as someone that God loves and that God seeks a relationship with, to know that each person is precious to God and someone that Jesus died for. To think this way in our congregational life together changes things. The New Testament teaches us that the church is supposed to be Christ's dynamic presence in the world. One of the hallmarks that the church depends on is the mutual love shared within the community of faith. In the Gospel of John, Jesus says, Love one another as I have loved you then everyone will know that you are my disciples by the way you love one another. And Jesus is a source of that love. Your heart becomes his home. His address is now your life. He lives with you and in you, a permanent residence. Knowing God's love empowers us to be the church, There's nothing you can do to make God love you any more than God already does. And there's nothing you can do to make God love you any less than God already does. I want to tell you about my friend Katie. And I've got my Kleenex ready if I need it. Katie is a voice and a spiritual leader in my life that helps me to know God. I've known Katie for about 25 years now. We were in seminary together, and then we worked as chaplains at a hospice in Minneapolis. We used to be in each other's daily life, and now we live some distance away, but we are connected heart to heart. In a two-year period, Katie's nephew was killed in a hit-and-run car accident. Her brother died. Her sister had a stroke. Her brother-in-law died. Her niece died. Her daughter-in-law was diagnosed with breast cancer, resulting in a double mastectomy. And the previous October to these two years, her beautiful 50-year-old daughter died from a brain tumor, leaving two teenage children. Here's where the tears come. This beautiful woman of deep faith has taught me so much about life with God. Katie is someone whom I have shared my joys and my challenges with, someone I've prayed with. She's someone I would trust with my very life. In spite of all that goes on in her life, she takes time out to call people and send cards with words of encouragement and support. She spends time in prayer every morning, talking with God, writing down her feelings, dealing with the sorrow in her life, and praising God for the blessings in her life. She understands that God's presence and love in her life does not depend on earthly circumstances. That's a big statement. She understands that God's presence and love in her life does not depend on earthly circumstances. She knows that when all else fails, God, who is love, will be there to sustain her and bring to life all the promises made to her because of her faith. She has dark days. 
She has days when she cries more than she does not. She cries healing tears, tears that show her feelings just as laughter and smiles do. I have a Valentine's Day card Katie sent me years ago that I keep near, and this is what she said in it. She said, it's a day of appreciation for the abundance of love we have in our lives. You, my dear, our friendship is a large portion of the abundance that God gives. Wow, I am blessed. Have a joy-filled day. Give Tom an extra hug for me. Warm thoughts and daily prayers for you and yours, Katie. I have learned so much from her. She teaches me that no matter what, we can always make the choice to choose God, to move toward love. She models for me how to love as Christ loves. And I know there are those in this very room and those listening and watching today who also do this very well, and we are grateful. What if more of us made this choice? Let's grow in our awareness that we always have a choice on how to act with each other, how to treat each other, how to reach out to each other. And let's choose ways that show others that God loves them, and then let's see what happens to our congregational life together. Who do you have in your life where you could be a voice for God as love? Who has been a voice of God as love for you? And have you told them? There was a man from a remote mountain village who had the opportunity to visit a large modern city. And while he was there, he came into contact with electric light bulbs and the idea of light at night. So he bought some bulbs and he bought some switches. And when he got home, he hung them on, in the front of his house and on his neighbor's trees and on his trees. And everyone said, well, what are you doing? And he said, well, just wait until it gets dark and I'll show you. So darkness came and he turned on the switches and nothing happened. No one had told him about electricity. He didn't know the bulbs were useless unless connected to the source of their power. My friends, we're like the light bulbs with our faith. When our Christ love is alive in us, we burn with a holy light. We have a life-giving love for all people. We shine to show the way to God. But if we're not connected, if we're not one with the vine, the source of our life, in touch with the infinite love, power, and strength of God, then we won't light up. Our first and foremost important job is to tend to our own personal relationship with God, Jesus, the Holy Spirit. Dr. Alan Wolfelt is a grief educator out in Colorado, and he directs a center for loss and life transition. And one of his books focuses on how to be a companion to others, how to walk beside people on their life journey. I'm hoping that this reading will give us some thoughts on how to walk with each other here in our congregational life together. So I'm going to invite the um, screen up that gives this companioning reading, and I'm going to invite you to read with me on the bold printed words. Companioning is about honoring the spirit. It is not about focusing on the intellect. Companioning is about curiosity. Companioning is about learning from others. Companioning is about walking alongside. Companioning is about being still. Companioning is about discovering the gift of sacred silence. Companioning is about bearing witness to the struggles of others. Companioning is about being present to another's pain.
Companioning is about going to the wilderness of the soul with another human being. My friend Katie knows how to be a companion. The church is on a journey, and we are helping to write the story. No matter how far we go to tell the story that God is love, God always has more for us. We are never finished. Have you ever stood on the edge of a beach that connects with the ocean and looked out as far as you can see? You can only see so far, but you know that's not the end of what there is. You know that something exists beyond what you can see. And so it is with our faith journeys together, our congregational care of one another. May we choose to grow in our care for one another and be generous and tremendous and exceptional and beyond belief lovers in faith, one for the other. I will meet you on the path, and we will walk side by side as companions on the journey. And may God, who is love, be our guide. Amen.
Christ our Lord invites to this table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. We've heard the word of God's love today, and we are called as people of love. So let us strengthen the bonds that unite us through sharing signs of Christ's peace, whether that's here in person or through the comment section on our Facebook live stream. The peace of Christ be with you. You may share signs with one another. As we come to this table, we come in gratitude, and so we share together in the great thanksgiving. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is a right and a good and a joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Almighty God, creator of heaven and earth. And so with your people on earth and the whole company of heaven, we praise your name and we join their unending hymn. baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and you made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which Jesus gave himself up for us, he took bread and he gave thanks to you, O God, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, and he said to them, take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples, and he said to them, drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink of it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will So we ask, O oh God, that you'd pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered across space and time and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and the blood of Christ that we may be for this world 
the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory. And we feast together at his heavenly banquet. Through your son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and all glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. As the children of God, with confidence, let us join our voices together, praying the way Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. I would invite the servers to come forward, and as they do, um, Christ's table is an open table, and you are welcome here. As Pastor Sherry mentioned at the beginning of the service, for those who are worshiping online and are in town, and can make it here between 10 and 10.30, um, we will meet you under the canopy. Uh, for those who are here, we will serve you, we'll come to you and serve you.
Let us pray. Eternal God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us. Grant that we may go into the world in the strength of your spirit to give ourselves for others. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, amen. From Reverend Cindy, I just want to say a special thank you to you for the extra time that you've taken to prepare this message of love so today. Uh, Cindy and her husband Tom uh, co-chair our congregational care ministries here at St. Paul's, and so just lifting up the ministry that you all lead with, with so many of you that serve on that committee and are witnesses, hands and feet, phone calls, notes, uh, flower delivery, all the different ways that we celebrate the congregational care that happens here at St. Paul's. Cindy and Tom, thank you for your good and faithful leadership. Mm. Well, thank yeah. you so much. Well, I thank, thank you, Sherry, and I just thank God for the privilege of being here uh, with everyone, uh, wherever you are today. It's a blessing. The words of our benediction come from, you are mine. Hear these. It says, I will come to you in the silence. I will lift you from all your fear. You will hear my voice. I claim you as my choice. Be still and know that I am here. I am the word that leads to freedom. I am the peace the world cannot give. I will call your name, embracing all your pain. Stand up, now walk and live. My friends, in faith, go now in peace and show the world that God is love. Amen.